so the I'm starting again then. So that this is the diagram of the architecture of Pagger, which is also present on the documentation about Pagger. Um, so the main part is going to be the web server. That's the, the Flask application that people interact with. On the on the back end, we have a database that the the web application updates and queries uh, live. And then we also have part of the, the core application, we have workers. Uh, that was the way we ensured that we, do, we didn't have two requests uh, writing to the same Git repo at the same time. So the, the Git repos are locked and the workers are the way to spread the load uh, when, we, when you update, when you interact with the Git repos. Um, and to do that uh, asynchronously so that we can, re we can return uh, quicker to the, to the user the page. So the web page, uh, the database, the workers also pick information from the database, interact with the Git repo there, mostly for updating them. The, um, the application itself reads them and uh, the workers write them. That's the, that's the ID. After that, we have uh, a PostFist server that's used for sending notifications. Um, so these are and Gitolite at the top, which is used to give uh, to control access uh, shell access. So Gitolite is what when you you know Git clone Git at Pagger.io blah blah. Uh, Gitolite is what is what Pagger uses to control who has access to what. Uh, so these are ba basically uh, the core part of Pagger, and everything else is pretty much optional. Uh, so we have uh, Milter here, who is uh, part of Postfixed and whose uh, role is to be able to, you should be able to reply to a ticket, a uh, notification from Pegger about a ticket, and your comment is directly added to the ticket uh, from the reply. So that's one part that uh, Adam has been working on at one point, <laughs> fixing it. <laughs> uh, we have the webhooks, so webhook to, to get notification to third party, basically. We have the, the CI the CI work. That's something that uh, one of the GSOC students, Fahan, worked on. Uh, currently, it supports only Jenkins, but the way it's built is such that we should be able to add pretty much any other uh, CI system that we would want to interact with easily. Uh, I started to look at um, Travis uh, recently, but not enough that uh, there is anything to work on. That would be something interesting to work on, but it's it's not going to be a small task, I think. But it would be would be nice to get there. And then we have the, the event source server here, uh, which is used for, um, so when you update, when you comment on a ticket or on pull request, or someone else comment on that ticket or that pull request, and you're viewing the page, the comment appears directly on the page without the need for you to reload it, and that's what the, the, event, the event source server is for. The, um, so it's, it's quite handy because you, you can basically then just chat with someone on a ticket. If you're both looking at the page, the, the, the comments will show up as they are posted. So it's, it's quite nice. It's also very handy for pull requests because it allows you to comment on a diff and not reload the entire page. So you, you stay at the place where you are, your comment is sent, it appears on the page, and you're still, uh, you're still at the same place on the page. You're not sent back to, uh, to the top of the page as you would if you were to do a, a regular post uh, request. Uh, and then the last item, um, we have the Pagur doc server. So that's what runs the docs.pagur.org. Uh, so it's a separate Flask application that just displays the documentation of the doc repos. And at the top here, we have the load the JSON uh, module service, which is used for when you, so a project on Pagur has four Git repos. There is the source Git repos, there is the documentation Git repo, and then there is the, is the issues and uh, pull requests, the good Git repos. And if you, you can interact with uh, the issues and pull requests, uh, Git repos manually, locally on your, on your uh, laptop. Um, but if you, and if you turn on the proper Git hook, the, you can actually also update the database from pushing to the, to the issue Git repo, for example. And that's what the logis on, uh, service is about, you will push to the, to the issue, it will see which file change and update the database based on the, the content of the files. And then we have the log.com service here, 
who is basically a hook. It's, part of, it's, it's actually part of the default hook. It's not a dedicated one. And that hook uh, is log logging the activity, the commit activities in the database so that we can, we can fill up the calendar heat map that shows up on uh, every user's profile. So if you're looking to why a certain activity does not show up in the calendar heat map, that's gonna be the outcome. If you're looking for why a certain issue is not refreshed while I pushed, that's gonna be the log JSON, uh, these kind of things. So that's a little bit the overview of the, the architecture of the project. Now, I guess what we can do is, uh, would you like, so the, the easy way, if the first thing is uh, to get yourself a, a bagger instance running on your machine if you don't already have one. And then we can just go through the, either through the easy fix or through the, the regular tickets and see uh, which one we, we can tackle. Which means that I think we can stop the recording because, yeah, I'm not going to stand here <laughs> if there is only the, the five of us in the room, six of us. <laughs>